look at the population of this planet, over 8 billion people, about 10% of them have no access to a power grid. About 43% of the people are on a grid that's unreliable. Is there a problem greater than access to power and energy? I mean, no economy can survive without access to, not, not today. We take it for granted in this country because we have a very reliable grid, but there are people that have no access. Our first target here was targeting support for critical assets that are located off the power grid. In the past, when someone needed off-grid power, they would install a diesel generator. But generators rely on fossil fuels and emit hydrocarbons. HCI Energy is working on a clean, reliable, and renewable solution to this problem. Nick Schmitz learns more about how these sustainable systems can be used in remote areas. Kurt, thank you so much for taking the time. Can you tell me what is HCI Energy and what is it that you do? Well, HCI Energy provides smart, renewable power for off-grid locations that essentially enable communities to have communication and, and connectivity that they wouldn't otherwise have. How is it that you do that? I'm seeing this thing behind us. Yep. Looks like a big box. <laughs> What's going on in this big box? So the big box is about eight feet by 10 feet, and it is configurable to different customer requirements. But a typical installation has solar energy, a wind energy, and then batteries. And so the solar then provides power for or during the day, and then the battery system provides backup during the night. And then there's also a generator that runs uh, during rainy nights or, or storm season and gets us through those difficult periods past solutions to this problem would have been a big giant diesel generator that you would have had to constantly be filling up with diesel, moving parts that are breaking down. Well, that's one of two possible solutions. One is that they would put a, a diesel generator, a propane generator running 24 seven. The other solution is nothing, okay. right? Many times telecom companies will just skip a location because it's too hard to bring them power. And they'll just say, we'll leave that as a skip hole because we don't have to have 100% coverage. So that works for telecom but it doesn't work for public safety, it doesn't work for remote communities, things like that. So we're not only we're able to provide a solution that's more fuel efficient or uh, renewable when, where it's needed, but in many cases we're providing connection and connectivity where there wasn't one before. So when you look at the technology involved in HCI, millions of cell phone towers throughout the world, hundreds of thousands of them are not on a power grid. They're being serviced today by a diesel generator. Why not have a greener solution? Now, the interesting part about this solution, it is not the scary kind of solution that you typically find in small companies where it's a new technology and nobody understands it. there's a real risk that it might not work. There's nothing new about wind. There's nothing new about solar panels. There's nothing new about batteries or generators. The secret sauce here is the integration of those resources to provide a greener solution that's also lower cost overall. So Kurt, I, I see that there is a generator in the system. Can you talk to me about how, how that generator is used and, and how often it's used? Yeah, so the primary power source in most of our applications is solar. So solar provides energy during the day and then charges the batteries and we utilize then the batteries through the night. The generator is there for storm season, rainy days, et cetera. It's a backup for the, for the system. Um, sometimes the generator is diesel and sometimes the generator is propane, depending on what's the fuel that's most available in that location. But when we run the generator, generator we run it in a hybrid mode, similar to a, a Prius or a hybrid car, and so the fuel efficiency is much, much better. So, Heather, what are we looking at here? You are looking at one of our hybrid power shelters. This one's actually really in the final testing phase, about to be ready to go out the door. Okay, and when it's tested and ready to go, how does it get from here to way up in Alaska? So it can go a multitude of ways. The great news is it's, it's super portable by its nature. So it can be put on a barge, it can be put on a truck, it can be helicoptered in. So it can go to very rugged, very remote areas high mountaintops, cold temperatures, you name it. It's actually built to be super portable. And, and how does it work? So, uh, let's step inside, I'll show you. The key thing about this is really what we call our ZPM, or Zero Glitch Power Module. It's an uninterrupted power supply, but a modern version of it. 
It takes multiple inputs and multiple outputs and actually displays them here on the screen. The really key differentiator about this is not only the multiple inputs and outputs, but that it optimizes renewables. The goal of the system is to use power from the wind or solar, storing it in the batteries to run whatever you need, communications, power for water, whatever it might be servicing. And essentially the generator, which is actually housed here, is the last resort. It wants to use all of the renewable energy first. Okay, so this is this is the brain. What differentiates this from, say, a diesel generator, this is monitoring to ensure that that's the last resort. That absolutely. we're using that generator when we absolutely need to, the rest of it's coming from the solar panels or the wind. So Kurt, it sounds to me like these are, are a real game changer. Can you tell us about some, some case studies, some places where where these systems have been deployed and the, the success? Well, one of, our, one of our favorite success stories is in the village of Unalakleet up in northern, northwest Alaska. The units left the factory in May of, of last year, and by September they were deployed and providing communication for their uh, internet and their emergency uh, land radio. And in, in mid-September, uh, Typhoon Merbach came in and flooded the village at 11 feet above high tide level. So a lot of the homes lost power. Uh, our shelter, which provided the, all of the um, power for the emergency communication system, did not. We st stayed rock solid, and so we allowed, allowed them to have their, their police and, and connection with the outside world through the whole emergency. Another project that we're really excited about is the Highway of Tears. And this is a cooperative between a, a Canadian telecom company and the government to provide uh, telecom communications between Prince Rupert on the Pacific Ocean and Prince George. And it's about an eight hour drive uh, on this highway. Um, the Highway of Tears is a sad story for British Columbia where they've lost over 80 indigenous women over the past 50 years. And they're providing then telecommunication links through the, the whole length of it. Many of those locations are very remote and we're providing power at the point of use. So Kurt, these are the finished product. This is what a customer gets delivered to them? Yeah, there are three different shelters here, and these are going to the Highway of Tears project. This module is the, the power side, and then they're paired up, and over there is the, the telecommunication side. And they'll be lifted in by helicopter to these three different locations that are in the remote side of the Highway of Tears. And to get there, they'll ship from Kansas City off to Seattle, get on a barge, and they'll go up to Prince Rupert, and then, then truck to a staging site, and then the last mile will be lifted by helicopter. In fact, that was one of our design requirements. We had to stay underneath the, the helicopter lift weight to, to get them up to the mountaintop locations. So, so these, these products are, are portable. You can put them pretty much anywhere in any sort of terrain yeah. in the world. Well, that's one of their advantages is they're turnkey. And uh, you can drop, drop it inside, and then we're within a week, we could commission, and they are up and operational with both power and telecommunications. And the nice thing is that it's ready, we just put it in place. The, previously, they would design site-specific things, and they would fly technicians in and out and try to ship all the equipment. Huge logistics nightmare. But instead, we're, we're ready and easy to deploy. Why is it so important that we invest more in sustainable solutions? If you're watching the news today, you, you can understand that su sustainable solutions must be a part of our future. When you look at the way we are supplying energy today, there's a limit to the amount of coal that we have, coal deposits. There's a limit to the amount of oil that we will have and for our kids and our grandkids. So we have to find other ways to provide that solution. And, and you know that the solutions we have today, they're very difficult on the environment. So we have to all work on finding solutions that are more sustainable over time that will also have a lower impact on the environment. Kurt, what kind of impact do these hybrid power solutions have on the communities that they serve? For people who have not had communication or internet in the past, it's a huge impact, right? The, we're reaching people that haven't been reached before, and it's a game changer, it's a life changer for them and their families. It's, it's communication connection, it's, it's internet service, it's, it's connection to health and, and specialty doctors that are remote. 
and we're reaching people that we haven't reached before, that have kind of been at the margins of society. Those are people in really remote locations, tribal communities, which are off the uh, power grid. And, and in the future, uh, distant communities in developing nations that need that connection and, and power to make that happen. So we're really, it's back to this theme of my world too, right? We're, where we're all connected and helping each other um, provide that, that sharing of information and sharing of connection. So Leo, what does the future hold for companies like HCI and for this space in general? Well, I, I believe the future is very bright, of course, otherwise we wouldn't have invested, but, and we believe this solution is the right one for this time. You know, here's the issue though. When you invest in, in a solution like this, you have to be patient. And I can tell you from the years I've spent in telecommunications and the power industry that the, the assets that we're trying to serve today have a solution today. It's just not a sustainable solution. But I can also tell you that the people who are responsible for maintaining those assets and, the, and making sure they have sufficient power are people who don't get paid for taking risk. So they are very slow to adopt new approaches. So we have to be very patient, but we know that this is a solution that cannot be overlooked. It is important, not just for those critical assets off the grid, but for those communities that need access to power, and they are all over this planet.